Praxis Prepper. Hey everybody, this is Praxis. I've been into prepping and preparedness for many years now. I've been hosting a prepping channel for about half a decade, but that doesn't mean that I'm perfect. And during this coronavirus pandemic, there are certainly some things that took me a little bit by surprise. And one of those things is the sheer number of masks that you go through during a pandemic, which lasts a significant amount of time. I think when I was doing my pandemic prepping, you know, 10 years ago, I bought a lot of masks. I have many 20 packs of masks and they're still in my pantry, but it's kind of making me a little nervous that I'm starting to eat into those and I'm not able to replace them. When you're into prepping and preparedness, oftentimes you'll have a pantry and as you eat things out of your pantry food, you replace it and it gets you a little bit nervous if you're not able to replace that stuff. And I'm starting to feel that way right now about masks. Uh, these are 3M N95 masks. I bought many of these you know, well back, you know, a decade ago before anyone was even thinking of pandemic. And uh, I've got a bunch of them that are starting to show their age. Uh, these aren't uh, things that I strictly use when I am you know, concerned about virus. In fact, this one right here, you can see it's all dirty on the inside. I'm in a construction site right now. I use these all the time when I'm cutting rock or doing anything with a lot of sawdust in the air. I'll wear these to protect my lungs from those types of things. And anyone that has ever worked in an environment with a lot of ash or dust or sawdust knows the importance of a real N95 mask with a real seal. And that means, you know, you shave your face down and you get a good seal all around here. Those little masks that people are making out of like colorful fabrics and stuff where they kind of go around the face and there's all these gaps on the side, you know, they're better than nothing at all. If someone actively coughs right in your face, maybe the stuff goes onto the outside of the mask instead of into your lungs. But if you really want protection, you need something that gives you a real seal and it bothers me that I'm starting to run through my real mask. Now I still have plenty, but I don't like the idea that I'm eating them down. And if you're in a situation where you don't have plenty and you want to make these last, it's important to do two things. One, you need to sterilize them of virus. And that's not what this video is about. Uh, I have other videos on that topic. Here's a link to one of them about sterilizing viruses off. But I'll just give you a, a quick rundown. You can take these, you can put them in an oven at 170 degrees for about 30 minutes. Uh, you can put them in a hot car, uh, you know, for a couple of days. Just leaving them out in the sunlight for several days, the virus isn't going to last more than several days on these if they're just kind of in a, a dry, sunny place. Uh, there, you know, there are other methods of doing that, UV light and things. You know, again, here's a video if you want to check that kind of stuff out. But what we're going to be doing is uh, addressing the other issue, and, and to some degree, the larger issue with these types of masks is. It's easy enough to kill the virus on it. In fact, the virus just dies of its own accord after several days. But as you're wearing these, they're also getting plugged up with ash and dust and pollen and soot and whatever is floating around in the environment that you're wearing these things in. And eventually these things start plugging up. You know, uh, when you put them on when they're fresh, they're pretty easy to breathe through. But after you've been cutting a lot of brick, these things clog up. And it's important to, if you're going to keep wearing the same mask, to free that stuff up. Now, there are multiple ways of doing that. In fact, I did a video uh, you know, several years ago before the pandemic about using water, about spraying water through the mask to get them through. That's not a way of killing virus, uh, viruses, but it is a way of flushing out particles. And here's another way, which is really easy for most people, and it's using a vacuum. Now, uh, if you're gonna flush these with water, you wanna have the water go from the inside to the outside, so you're pushing the particles back out in the direction in which they came. But with the vacuum, uh, we're gonna be uh, kind of uh, attacking attacking from the other side. So in the same way, we're having the air come from the inside and push to the outside. So I'll just show you what I'm going to be doing right here. I got a vacuum and I'm going to turn it on. I'm sticking it right onto the mask and you can see it's got a good, pretty good suction there. And on the inside here, I'm not feeling that much breeze because this thing is pretty darn clogged up. I'm going to take it and kind of rub it around here. And this is doing damage to the mask. This is not going to be as good as a brand new mask when I'm done with it, but it's certainly going to be better than no mask at all. Alright, so I'm pushing it around here, and already I'm putting my fingers here and I'm feeling there's a little bit more breeze going through here. Because there were all those particles inside, and the particles were blocking the airflow, but as I knock the particles out, I'm getting a little bit more airflow through here. Now, I don't think there's any studies on how many times exactly you can do this to a mask before it's completely plugged up. I'm sure that uh, there's a lot of variables that determine that, you know, between, uh, you know, the humidity in the air, like how dry you've kept the mask, what the nature of the particles are, you know, whether it's just 
dust or pollen or ash or, or rock particles or sawdust or whatever might be in the mask. But certainly, you can get an awful lot out. And once I'm done on the out, outside, and I feel like I've gotten the outside pretty done, I'm going to do the inside too. Because dust just gets all over everything. All right. In this mask now, wow, it breathes a lot easier than it did just a little bit ago. Uh, you know, when I was putting this on, uh, you know, at the end of the day yesterday, I was using this when I was cutting some brick. Uh, it was, yeah, you could really feel that there was, uh, you know, there was a lot in there. But now, having vacuumed it through, it, it, it breathes almost like it's brand new. It works really well. The only thing that this uh, technique doesn't address is these rubber bands. These start breaking down over time. And obviously, you can just, uh, you know, staple in some new ones, get some new ones attached in there, or tie the, these onto some new uh, rubber band straps. I wouldn't necessarily recommend rubber bands themselves because they get caught up in your hair and that's kind of uncomfortable. But you can get these kind of uh, stretchy rubbery materials from fabric stores and things like that. In fact, I'll put a link down below to a, a link where you can get these kind of replacement bands on the back because these things, honestly, are what go first. And if you don't have a good pull up there, this thing's going to fall, be falling forward, being falling, uh, falling off your face, and then it's not going to do you any good at all. So that's it. You can reuse these things if you're careful with it. It's not going to be as good as a brand new mask, but if the only option is a clean mask or no mask, I'm going to go with a clean mask. That's it. Thanks for watching. This episode is brought to you in part by Burning Hearth Homestead, a nonprofit that aims to provide seeds, live plants, and education to the community both local and extended. Plant seeds, plant knowledge, plant the future. If you'd like to thank them for supporting this channel or find out more about what they do, go to burninghearthhomestead.org. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.